Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave and today I want to show you some new tools that I bought for the workshop. And what I needed was a set of bearing pullers, but I needed a set of blind bearing pullers. And we'll have a look at what they are. And this particular kit I just bought off Australian eBay. It was very cheap, it was $42.75, including postage. And it has a number of sizes from 8mm up to 32mm. And I did need a particular size for a job that I have to do. And I went to an industrial store and they quoted me about $85 just to buy one. And I found this on Australian eBay in a kit. And uh, it was very cheap. I do realise that it's not the same quality as probably the one I was looking at. But I'm sure it'll do the job. This particular kit has a number of different sizes for different sizes uh, of bearing and it also has this slide hammer which is included in the kit. So the idea is that you put this inside your bearing and this is for bearings that you can't get behind and there may be the occasion where you need to pull a bearing out that you can't actually get behind to remove it and this actually goes through the centre of the bearing and then expands on these tongs and then you connect it up to this a little slide hammer attachment here like that and then you can actually tap tap the bearing and hopefully it comes out. Now I didn't lash out and spend a lot of money on a kit because I don't need to do a lot of this type of work but I do have a particular job that I need to do and I'll show you what that is now. This is a new to me ag bike that I've bought for the farm to round up the sheep and cattle. Now I don't know a lot about motorcycles, but the seller did tell me that this would be the perfect bike for the job. It's a BMW R1200 GS. And I did ask what the GS stands for and they told me it stands for great for sheep. So perfect, this is the perfect ag bike for the farm. Now I've been riding this around for a couple of months. I have just in the last week or so realized that there is a bit of a problem in the front wheel here and it's making a bit of a noise and I'm pretty sure that it's in the wheel bearing. So what I plan to do today with my new blind bearing puller set is to remove the front wheel on this bike and replace the bearings. I'm just going to take this old dust seal off here to get to the bearing underneath. I'll just give this a little bit of protection with this plastic mat here and just get a screwdriver under there and it should just pop out. That's easy enough, isn't it? All right, there's the bearing. So you can see the, the bearing here and inside here is a sleeve that runs through there. So I don't really have enough purchase on the inside to get a drift or anything in there to come out from the inside and push it out. So that's why I'm using these blind bearing pullers. Okay, I'm just gonna put my hot air gun on and just try and warm some of this area here. measuring how warm it is.
just looking at the top of the bearing and it's got a heap of rust I can see down the side and uh, yeah it's, I think it's been in there for a while I might just spray just a little bit of WD down the side of it see if that makes any difference okay so this is the one of the bearing pullers out of the kit now I haven't got exactly the right size as the diameter of this bearing and it's a bit loose so what I've got to do is tighten this top part in here and that actually expands the bottom part out and that'll give it the grip on the bearing and then I can pull it out I hope um, there's a very fine little edge on the bottom here and what I've got to try and do is get that on top of the spacer and underneath the bearing which is you can sort of feel it when you put it in it's a bit of a hit and miss thing so I think it's about there somewhere I think let's try that just tighten it up it seems to be on the bearing tighten it and we'll put our slide hammer on the top see what happens now I'll give it a bit of a tap I don't want to go too much because I don't want to damage any of the spokes or anything here but I'll just see if I can see any movement there or not um, I think it is coming out I'll just heat this up a bit more I think it's coming. Yep. Slowly, but I can see it's moving. I think I'm actually pulling up the the spacer with it. Oh, maybe not. It's probably moved at about five mil. I want to do it much but it's uh yeah I don't know if you can see it on the video that it is coming up a bit almost there almost there okay it actually picked up the spacer in the in the middle as well and pulled it out but either way I guess it's uh, it's out okay so that came out I can see that there's a bit of rust I don't know if you can see in here there's a bit of rust and stuff in there which probably didn't help the equation anyway we'll turn it over and try the other side Right, I'll just get this uh, dust seal out. This one's a little bit bigger than the other side. You'll see the difference there because this one actually has a, a collar that fits in there. So the seals are actually different. I do notice there's a little area here which I can probably get down into. I don't know what that's for, but I think it's probably safer if I just do the same thing and come in under here and take the seal out. Again, I can see down the top of here that there's 
quite a bit of rust and stuff in there as well. So I don't think these bearings have been out for a long time. Now this one, this one maybe should come out easy because there's no um, sleeve inside it. I can grab it right on the bearing. I'll just do the same thing. I'll give it a bit of a, a bit of a heat here. This ring around here is the ABS sensor, so I don't want to damage that at all. Just put a bit of WD down in there. Again, I don't know if it's actually going to do anything. It may do. Okay, so we'll put this in. Same thing again, just hold it and tighten it up. It's got to expand quite a long way. slide hammer back in it's a bit of an angle I can see that it's not you can see that spinning around it's not like in the dead center but make sure I've got enough thread into the top of it and okay we'll just try the same thing maybe going to try and hold the wheel a bit as well as it it's actually a bit warm so I don't want to go at it at a million miles an hour I could probably if I had a press I could turn this over and just come in now from the top because it's not blocked I could probably put a a drift or something in there and press it out but I don't actually have a, a press at the minute well eventually I did get the bearing out it was certainly a lot tougher than the other side but I just worked away at it slowly I didn't want to sort of get too ballistic with it and end up doing any damage to the um, disc or bend the spokes or anything. Anyway, it's out now and um, I'll just spin it. I don't know if you can hear that. I'll try the other one. I'll just spin it near the microphone so you can listen. That one's a bit dry. I might actually open it up and take the cover off and see what's inside to see if there's any grease still in there or not. Alright, so this is the bearing I can see that there's a number on there 6204 LU NTN bearing let's just take the plastic cover off and see what's underneath here it should just come off if I can get it off okay and that's what's inside the bearing so what is it? It's all just dry material. All the grease is actually dried up. And it's all, um, yeah, all the grease has gone solid in there. It's not that smooth to turn it around. It does turn a bit, but yeah, it's pretty bad. One of the YouTube channels that I watch 
It's called 65 Ford and uh, you had a video on just the other week on repacking these bearings so he said that he thinks that they don't really wear it's just this grease dries out in here and goes solid which is what this one's done and his advice was just to clean it up uh, with some like uh, carburetor cleaner or brake cleaner or something like that and uh, then put some more grease in it and put the seal back on the top and go again but I'm going to put new bearings in I think. Right I've just laid out my old bearings and seals here and I did have a look online for some replacements and they look to be about 55 Australian dollars something like that but I couldn't tell in the looking at them online whether they were a Chinese bearing it certainly didn't say they were a Japanese or a high quality bearing so I would assume that they weren't of such great quality. Anyway, I've just come back from my local bearing supplier where I've picked up some original replacement NTN bearings and some seals and all I had to do was just give them the numbers of the original bearing. In this case it's a 6204LU which they matched up and then the two dust seals here and the seals are, are measured by the internal diameter, the external diameter and then the depth or the thickness of the seal. So this one was a 30.47.7 this is in millimetres and this one was a 25.47.7 there so I've got all those um, I'm happy with the quality of those I'm, I'm glad I'm actually putting in some better quality NTN bearings back in. Okay I've got everything now ready to put my wheel back together so I've got my new bearing here now which will go in there I've got a large socket here which I'll use to tap that bearing in and then once it's in place I'll put my new outer dust seal or seal on the back there. Now I'm not going to show that process, this isn't a video on putting in wheel bearings um, really I'm just going to concentrate on the bearing puller set for this so I'll crack on and do this and get this back on the bike. Now I've been looking at some other online videos about using these blind bearing pullers and one thing I've noticed is I think the technique that I was using was probably slightly incorrect. What I did is I picked a size that was a little bit smaller than the centre of my bearing and when I put it in you could see that there was a lot of movement there and if I look at the back side of this you can see that there's a lot of movement there as well that it can actually come off there quite easily. And then when I put it down and started expanding the teeth. The teeth were way too low for the bearing. What I think I should have done is actually taken the bearing puller and tightened it up a little bit. Let's see if I can do this now. Given it a couple of turns just to start expanding those teeth below. So these teeth here have just come apart a little bit and then put it into the bearing and then pressed it in if I can get it in and then that's nice and tight now and you can see that those teeth there are nicely seated under the bearing and that's nice and tight on the top and I can start putting my slide hammer on the top and pulling it out so I think that's what I should have done and I think in future that's what I'll try and do. So then it comes down to the question whether I think this kit is worth the money and I think it is. For $42.75 that it cost me I think it was fine and it did the job, it worked okay. The quality of it seems to be alright and they actually are quite heavy so I think the um, type of steel or whatever they're made out of is quite good. Now the one issue I did have is because the one I had to use which was this one wasn't exactly the right size to fit the bearing I was trying to use it on I had to fiddle around with it to get the right um, fit on the bottom as you saw but really I suppose what you could do is actually buy exactly the right size but then you never know what particular bearing you might need to remove. So I'm happy with the kit. The only comment I would make is um, I've had similar items like this before and I'll just show you this black iron socket that I have here this is a large one that I have and over a period of time it gets very rusty and 
the finish starts to go on it. So I would think that um, for this one, what I will do is probably just get some WD-40 and just give it a coat of WD-40 just to keep it oiled. So when I store it away, if you're not using it for a year or so, then it may stop it sort of rusting a little bit. Anyway, I, I am happy with it. Um, if you actually Google or go onto eBay and look for a nine piece blind bearing puller set, you'll probably find exactly the same item as what I've got here. Okay, that's it for today's video. I appreciate everybody watching the video, supporting the channel. Please share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.